Hello and welcome to the metagame of the Library Land expansion, where the only way to lose is not to play. My name is Mita Williams. I'm the acting law librarian at Windsor Law at the University of Windsor. I have a personal motto, and that is changing the rules so more can win. I recently spent a year, a sabbatical year, one that ended June 30th, um, and I spent that year reading and writing about games and play. And it was a wonderful experience. I was able to read widely. Um, I was able to uh, spend some time trying to uh, capture some of the stuff that I've learned. Uh, I have an article coming out recent, uh, then very shortly uh, in the Playful Library issue of the Journal of Play and Adulthood. And uh, if you are interested in learning more specifically about play in academia, uh, I recommend the Playful Academic Special Issue and Designs for Playful Learning. Uh, it's something that I uh, would love to introduce more people to. It's uh, as a new way of, of, of kind of considering the systems that we work in. When I was on my sabbatical, I did design some games as well. For example, one of the games that I designed was called We Stayed Up All Night, My Friends and I. It is a uh, playable bibliography or a otherwise known as a choose your own manifesto game. Um, it's, uh, it's a game that's run, uh, this game you can play in your browser and it's run uh, using the Twine game engine. Um, but a lot of the games that I've made actually are card games or uh, puzzle games that can only be played uh, in a specific place. Now there are a number of different reasons why I spent my year uh, learning and thinking about games in a context of libraries and there are several reasons why I did so but I will leave you with this one grand idea uh, that designing games is one way to better understand how systems behave. Indeed, one way that we can consider tabletop games um, is not dissimilar to paper computers. Uh, they are designed, they enact systems of rules and procedures, and if those rules and procedures are changed or reordered, they can have sometimes very different outcomes uh, in both the end of play or in the experience of those players who are playing the game. One of the things that I learned from that year was that game design is hard. Um, and one of the lessons that I would like to embark or share with you uh, in part, not embark, in part with you, is that game modification is easier. And in fact, we should feel more, um, more able to modify games. We should feel more liberated to do so. Because unlike so many other cultural artifacts, games themselves, the game mechanics are, are considered systems and are therefore uncopyrightable. The artwork surrounding a particular game can be copywritten. The text, the branding can be copywritten. But game mechanics themselves are uncopyrightable and therefore they can be reused and they can be um, rethought of and remixed and reimagined in all sorts of wonderful ways. So one of the game modifications that I did over the course of my sabbatical was called the metagame. And the metagame was a game from uh, several years now. Uh, it is was created by a trio of, of game designers. Uh, I believe it was specific first designed either for a, a magazine and then used at a games conference. So it was like sort of a massively multiplayered a conversation game. 
Um, and that's what this is largely is. It's a, it's a conversation game where uh, you share opinions about various cultural artifacts. It has, uh, the game is actually two, comprised of two decks. Um, one of them is a deck of culture cards of civilization's greatest achievements. And a second set of cards of opinion cards. Um, and in the various versions of this game, you play one of these against the other and you uh, judge and argue your case. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, that sounds a lot like Cards Against, Human Cards Against Humanity. And, or uh, the deeper cut, uh, Cards Against Librarianship. And indeed, that question has been raised to the designers of the metagame. And in fact, the metagame came first. Uh, Cards Against Humanity cited the metagame as one of their game influences. Um, I will just probably just state on the uh, onset that my particular version of the metagame uh, with library theme one is absolutely uh, unabashedly sincere and wholesome and very much interested in uh, just getting more information and and and, and uh, opinions uh, of our colleagues and our friends about very aspects of library land. Um, and I did this by reaching out to friends and said, hey, I'm making a library game. Um, I came up with some ideas uh, that could be cards in such a game of librarianship. And I asked them, I said, what am I missing? And uh, that was my starting of my list. And then people uh, gave me some great suggestions to uh, complete that list. Um, and as we know, the, the best thing to do with problems is to put them in a spreadsheet. And I did that. So you can see here, this is the makings of the list of culture cards. Um, I took uh, each of these sort of major ideas and I went to the noun project where I could find um, Creative Commons licensed uh, icons that I could use and apply them against each of these terms. And then what I did was I made use of uh, free to use software called Nandec. I heard about Nandec by listening to a game design podcast in which the designer of Wingspan uh, told uh, the audience that she used Nandec extensively in her development and of Wingspan and because it, you, can, you can quickly and easily uh, make and reiterate and design uh, cards. And so the, the code that you see in front of you is the code that um, I used to make my uh, version of the Library Land metagame. And in fact, just yesterday, I received the output of those cards. Um, I generated the cards. I sent them off to uh, a company called The Game Crafter. Um, there's a very nice tight integration between Nandec and that particular company. And they were able to uh, print out and make available uh, these two decks. And uh, they, if you are interested, uh, you can buy your own uh, for the low, low price of uh, $30 and 74 cents uh, USD. Um, alternatively, I have made uh, this, this same set of cards available as PDFs. Um, I will provide the link elsewhere um, in, a, uh, in, a, in an addendum bibliography uh, where you can download the two sets of cards uh, print them out on two different colored pieces of paper um, and play with your friends uh, and your library staff room um, or uh, play at the library conference. I mean, one of the things that I was very much hoping to do was to take this deck of cards and bring it to access so that I could play it uh, with you all there. But unfortunately, uh, that was not possible this year. Uh, maybe at the next Access Conference. And to leave, uh, I just want to leave this quote. Uh, I think of uh, the work of, uh, of Bernie de Coven uh, quite a bit. Uh, he is a sort of scholar of play. And he says that in a game community, the rules and officials decide uh, if the players are good enough to play. If not, they change the players. But in a play community, the players decide if the game is fun enough to play. And if not, they change rules and i've always thought of the good of the community of access um, as a play community and i hope you enjoy the rest of your conference bye